Welcome to the session uh, which I call the state of authentication in 2024. Uh, this will be a panel discussion, so hopefully we will have some nice uh, discussion here with the audience. Uh, my name is Stanislav Lasnička. I am working as a principal software engineer in OpenShift authentication team in the control plane. And uh, joining me today uh, is Fraser Tweedell from Red Hat IDM. Uh, amazing, uh, I would say, X509 uh, certificates magician uh, running a, a beautiful book I, I definitely uh, I would definitely recommend checking it out uh, and along with him uh, on his right side is Mike Posula uh, an amazing guy who, who deals with uh, the OID specifications and is a principal software engineer in the peak log team also has a blog uh, and uh, well that's the speakers but there's also you or the audience who will be talking to us today. Uh, by any chance, would, would somebody would like to come uh, and join us here on the stage? Yes, no? All right. Uh, well, Sally? This, 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 this young man right over here? Yeah, come, come, come and join us. Put your hands together for an unknown fellow. <laughs> One of us. Uh, hello and welcome. Hey. Uh, would you please introduce yourself? Uh, there, there's a mic in, in yeah. the hand of that young man. Hi, um, I'm Chris. And yeah, I like uh, uh, identity, and yeah, I'm trying to look into it deeper and deeper. So, yeah. And I can see that you've got a Dynatrace shirt, so I assume that you are from uh, that. No, company, I'm not maybe? from Dynatrace, but I was at the Perform in Las Vegas this year, mm -hmm. and this was the current shirt I was. Grabbing on from they, they've bag. got some nice shirts. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, to, to start off with, just 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 a little lightweight, uh, you know, some some introductory questions. Uh, so uh, guys, would you uh, would you describe for us like shortly uh, some authentication feature you develop uh, and uh, it, a talk that you gave about our authentication topic? Just some some something small, uh, something that you did. Uh, uh, should I? You can start with. You you got a mic. Oh. Okay. 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 Uh, so, yeah, right about the, the PERFORM conference, uh, I was looking into something like, I wouldn't say an abstraction layer for identification, but it was something uh, to reduce the login effects of identification platforms. For example, when you're starting with, uh, with development, then you mostly say, okay, email, password would be enough, and then it the worst case was uh, what happened afterwards would be it would be successful, and then you're stuck with it. And here I wanted to introduce an abstraction layer so that you can, for example, have key cloak right away or move from octor or off zero, and that's something I worked on mm -hmm. a little bit. Some, sounds very nice. Uh, Fraser, what, what, what did you work on? Well, recently I was not developing but testing and demoing some Linux desktop authentication features using passkeys and also logging on via uh, an open IADC identity provider through a free IPA system to the Linux desktop. So with your uh, GNOME display manager, login prompt, being able to use these modern authentication technologies to authenticate to your machine, your workstation. Sounds really great. Mike? Hello, so that's a good question. What was the last uh, authentication feature? Uh, as uh, I am also uh, not developing just features related to authentication, uh, but uh, also I am working as a team lead and coordinating like various things and uh, pull requests. But maybe something which was mentioning is uh, also some participation of the uh, uh, pull request, which was a contribution from the community. Uh, about like uh, better passkey support, like we now have like uh, preview support for passkeys and uh, conditional, uh, yeah, like conditional UI where there is like possibility to create, uh, choose from the usernames uh, of like real passkey and uh, when you are authenticated from server and so on. And uh, besides that, some uh, improvements uh, in Keycloak related to when you have like concurrent login in multiple browser tabs and uh, like authentication session expires in some of the browser tabs and uh, 
then uh, when you go to some other tab, it was like a big uh, strange behavior sometimes. And uh, pages like with the message, yeah, like you are already logged in, maybe some of you experienced it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so this should be improved now. Very, very nice. So you, you, you can see that these guys really know what they are talking about. Uh, and <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, so, so, Marek, since you, you, you've got a mic, uh, would you, do, do you have a favorite uh, authentication product of, of your own, something that, that you really enjoy the user experience of? I mean, besides Keycloak, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I'm not so, like, uh, involved in, uh, like, flying or so other, other solution. Uh, I know that, like, one of or some of our competitors, which uh, was mentioning is, uh, Okta, for instance. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so, so maybe that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Okta is very nice. Oh, Christian, do, do, do you have su uh, such a product of your, uh, that, that you enjoy? Um, not that I uh, already used it, but I had a little look into it. Uh, Citadel, mm -hmm. it's like the same thing like Keycloak, but developed uh, with Golang. And gave me a little bit the perspective, hey, if there would be some changes necessary, I could implement them by my own. Because mm -hmm. I'm not a Java developer, so that would be, for me, a little bit of hindrance for Keycloak. But in the day-to-day, -day, I'm using Keycloak for side projects and so on. Yeah, that's really nice. First time I'm hearing about Citadel. i got to check it out afterwards. Okay, sir? I would like someone to tell me what is a great authentication experience and which products have it. Because I don't think... I have ever experienced a great <laughs> authentication experience. That is fair. Mm. Mm. But if we cast the net mm, a little wider from specific technologies and more to uh, the holistic user experience, something that impressed me recently, um, it was not really particularly well implemented, but um, dealing with banks and opening new bank accounts uh, at least in my country, you used to have to go to a bank and physically show up with identity documents. Now it's possible to do this thing online and you submit some scan of your passport or driver license, um, take a screenshot with your phone with some sort of um, contemporary information like a newspaper or, or something else current, and uh, then the bank can automatically process that. So it's a kind of authentication and it's just making things that used to be a bit more of a hassle possible to do from your own home now. So uh, that was something that, whilst I think it was not a great experience, it's definitely progress. That sounds really nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing something like that here in the Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. All right, so that was the introduction. And uh, so I prepared a bunch of topics that we could talk about. But I would like to make this, you know, a little bit more and more of a discussion with the audience. And so I'm wondering, uh, does anyone have uh, something that they would like to ask that that's you know sort of in uh, in the area of authentication? Uh, if if you do, please raise raise your hand and uh, we'll hear you. Sally. Uh, so uh, the, the, this question is, uh, is coming a little bit more from the uh, supply chain security area. Uh, and the question was uh, about Sixstore and uh, short-lived uh, keys that uh, they publish in their ledger and then those are used to sign uh, artifacts uh, that, that you built. Uh, did I get that right? Have, uh, and the question was, uh, have we seen or used... Oh, 
Oh, I see. Uh, and, and so the question is, do, do we have something like that in authentication where uh, you would have a short-lived certificate where basic, or, or key uh, with us, uh, along with the certificate and uh, after publishing the certificate, we no longer care about the certificate, but, uh, but we only care about the, the record of it in, in, in an immutable ledger. Have, have, you, have you boys heard anything like, uh, like that? Yeah, so this is using uh, a technology class called a transparency log. And we use the same sort of thing in PKI for certificate transparency, where you have a, a log of issued certificates. Certificate authorities are required uh, required to log the issuance of certificates and then they can uh, supply inclusion proofs that certificates were logged. The inclusion proofs take O log N space, so they're small, and they can be verified efficiently. What I like about SIGStore is this um, verification after the fact. Okay, So this is not like an authentication where I need to know now you are who you say you are, or I have a verifiable identity assertion right now, and I'm going to let you in. And then after that, there's a session established. And so the idea of an inclusion proof that, you know, I successfully proved my identity at such and such a time, I don't think is necessarily useful. But with SIGSTOR, you need to be able to verify post facto, yes, um, the certificate over this software package is valid because it was issued with a valid certificate at such and such a time, and I have an inclusion proof in the in the Merkle tree that that uh, key was valid at that time. So, for authentication, I don't really think it solves a problem we have, but maybe it does, and, and I need my man my mind expanded. Yeah, I cannot really contribute here something so. <laughs> Yeah, I also not very experienced with this, like uh, something which is uh, related to maybe maybe similar in the OpenID Connect protocol is like uh, client authentication with uh, uh, certificates, like where a client is the application which which like uh, needs to authenticate uh, against TCOG server at some part of the the OpenID Connect workflow, and. Uh, Client is able to authenticate with its uh, certificate, like uh, at MTLS layer, and then the tokens which are issued to the client uh, have some like signature of the of the key of the client. But uh, yeah, that's probably not like directly related. But, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 definitely. I I I didn't think of uh, certificate transparency in the beginning, but that was nice. And of mm -hmm. course, yeah, M MTLS. We still use this, the certificate technically, but yeah, it's a it's a good call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very very nice question. Thank you. Oh, the answer are you there? Oh, what about using a or oh, decent right? Decentralized uh, authentication. Uh, have you have you heard about this before? Uh, this is this is the uh, this is the first time for me. Uh, and and what, what what was the full name of it again? Decentralized. Mm -hmm. Decentralized mm -hmm. identifier. Okay. Yeah, so like this is also related to OpenID for ver verifiable credentials, right? Like uh, that there are some standards which are like related to that. And uh, right now we like we had some effort uh, in Tico, which uh, which is like implementing some things related to it. Then uh, Tico might be the issuer of the like verifiable credentials, uh, but like it's very like experimental feature and it's uh, development 
and uh, we have like community working groups which is working on those uh, things and uh, I'm not uh, like very familiar with this yet uh, but like it's already like uh, in progress and uh, yeah community is working on it so we will have something like this probably soon in Pico but uh, not not yet um, yeah, definitely first time for me. Uh, Chris, Chris, uh, hearing about this, Christian, do you, do you know about decentralized identifiers? So, so in that case, uh, the concrete implementation or what uh, what was discussing uh, before is not what I really find about. But for me, maybe to raise an additional question would be, uh, what's the difference between uh, this idea and PGP? Because using in a decentralized way, so we have always using the, the public-private keys. And if I say to a service, hey, this is my public key, and when I'm logging in, give me a challenge, for example, as we maybe will talk about in the, in the um, uh, pass keys um, terminology, then we have exactly that what we wanted. It's decentralized because I can control my, my private key, and then I will share wherever I want my public key. This is basically decentralized, so I'm not sure what's the difference, or maybe there are some different implications which I didn't thought about. Sounds like X509. <laughs> it um, does. You know, many authentication systems, um, if you take a step back and squint, look a lot like X509, but people have not wanted to deal with the standards, with the certificates, with ASN.1 and DER, and like th those are definitely unpleasant things to deal with. Uh, but yeah, reinventing the wheel. Yeah, very nice, uh, very, very good questions uh, and very nice answers. Uh, thank you, boys. Uh, and thank you. Um, any other questions from the audience? I see one gentleman right on top. Also, if, if I got the questions correct, uh, you are asking about being able to use tokens to authenticate uh, to LDAP, is that so? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I took the question differently, so please tell me if I'm wrong. But uh, my understanding of the question was that it's not a good practice to have your web applications uh, authenticating users directly to an LDAP. Uh, instance and so what alternatives do we have to doing that and to uh, migrate legacy applications away from that way of doing authentication first of all why is it bad it's bad because your users credentials are floating through all of your web applications in order to uh, authenticate them and the application possessing now the user credentials will perform a bind operation which is an authentication against the LDAP server. We don't want applications to handle raw user credentials, but rather to deal with other ways of proving an identity or asserting an identity to that application. What we have already are systems like SAML or OpenID Connect, which you can deploy using Keycloak or Red Hat SSO or many other um, solutions for doing that. And you're delegating then the actual authentication and the dealing with the credentials to a centralized identity provider. And that identity provider will then uh, propagate identity assertions to the application or will uh, propagate those assertions or proofs through the user or the user agent to the application. And the application will then deal with those identity assertions. The migration story is, yeah, it's, it's linear in the number of applications that you have that are doing it the old-fashioned way. They need to be updated to deal with SAML or OpenID Connect or some other authentication mechanism. Yeah, again, 
Uh, LDAP is not something where I had prior uh, knowledge. So, but I, I know, for example, the Keycoke uh, supports this implementation, so that you shadowing more or less certain can use mm -hmm. and build upon in Keycoke. Yeah, that, that definitely. I'll probably put in something in front of Keycoke that, that that you can then then use in your applications. Something yeah, exactly. like Keycoke. Yeah. Something. Yeah, uh, thanks for the explaining. Okay. So uh, I can just add that like uh, Keycloak like have support for uh, for the LDAP integration, and uh, then uh, like when you want to like uh, as Fraser mentioned, when you want to integrate your application uh, with LDAP or authenticate against LDAP, uh, it may be useful to use identity server uh, and uh, delegate. So, so the or the identity server like uh, Keycloak will authenticate against LDAP and then the application will receive tokens or assertions. Uh, like also, like uh, Keycloak offers uh, possibility that even uh, in case that like LDAP server is like Microsoft Active Directory, uh, for instance, then uh, or something which supports Kerberos, then there is no, not even need uh, from uh, like Keycloak side to a trigger like bind uh, operation against LDAP server, but uh, it may be possible to like use like uh, Kerberos based uh, password verification, which might be uh, like more secure. Uh, or uh, like of course it's always uh, always recommended to use LDAP as uh, like when uh, when uh, like LDAP server is when it's needed to directly uh, integrate uh, interact between Keycloak server and the LDAP server. Just one more brief comment. Uh, often, if your application is behind an Apache or an Nginx or some other web server, there may be modules available for handling the authentication. So you simply configure the Apache or the Nginx module or what have you, and uh, it can deal with the SAML assertion or the OpenID Connect assertion. and uh, authenticate the user, and then populate the request environment with the fields containing username, their email address, their groups, and so on. Yeah. Yeah, um, very nice so that answer. simplifies the, the integration side. Yeah, yeah, um, though, yeah, I think those are more or less the standard ways to, to deal with this, this problem. And very nice answer. Thank you. Uh, very nice question, too. Thank you. Uh, any, any, ah, I see uh, this young man, Yurka, uh, here in the second row. So the, the the question, if I, if I got that uh, correct, uh, is using SSH and and uh, with with some keys, they may bring up many many malpractices uh, when 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 you're setting that up, and uh, you don't like the SSH keys being distributed. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. So some oh so so how to how to manage keys in the remote access. Uh, Okay, it's not. It's just about how to do SSH create, and uh, yeah, okay, uh, that's an interesting question and uh, and a topic. What do you guys think about SSH SSH authentication and uh, how to make it better? <laughs> <laughs> we are not touching that with a three foot pole. <laughs> So maybe a different story uh, about SSH uh, using Azure services in my previous company. And it was like, oh, VMs. In that case, we spun up VMs, and it would be great to have something already configured and using, for example, uh, what's allowed by it for this user and so on. So I think SSH by itself, in my opinion, what I can really determine uh, with my skills it's great already, but I think the implementation is dragging behind, like from cloud providers. Yeah, you can SSH in your uh, VMs, for example, but that the whole integration with, uh, for example, an RBAC or so, 
uh, is still missing. And this is quite complicated. I didn't manage it back then, but hopefully in a couple of years this will come along because, as mentioned before, I think there are issues uh, in handling this. And yeah, maybe there are some improvements there. I believe that free IPA does uh, does quite a lot in terms of uh, SSH and uh, how to maybe restrict access to some of the commands. Uh, and then maybe, well, do you have any inputs on that, for example? Yes. Mm -hmm. There are many uh, ways to authenticate through the SSH protocol. It can bunk to PAM. So anything PAM can do, SSH can do. You can use... SSH uh, keys, password authentication, SSH certificates, uh, which are different from X509 certs, but you still need some kind of PKI to issue them. They can typically restrict uh, who the user is, what commands can be executed when that certificate is used. There's also the, if you want to use just regular SSH keys, there's a distribution problem. How do you get them out to the machines? And uh, also the known hosts keys, so that users don't have to, you know, tofu, trust on first use, everything that they see, okay? Users don't verify the keys, so we need machinery to make sure that that key verification is happening. Most users aren't going to do that work, and they shouldn't have to. Um, on your point... And the problem of bringing up machines in clouds and the fact that they typically have, okay, give us your SSH key and then you can use that to SSH in. And how do we do better? At Red Hat, my team, we're currently building um, a solution for Red Hat Hybrid Cloud Console, which will enable new virtual machines to automatically and securely be enrolled in an identity management system, a free IPA system, without any further operator intervention without any further configuration management required, such as Ansible. And so when that machine comes up, after one or two minutes, it will be registered, joined to the domain, and all of the authentication methods, the identities, and the access policies defined in that domain will be applied on that host. So that's the way we want to improve this situation. Very nice, very nice. Um, Mark, do you have uh, any comment? Oh, that, oh, sorry. I see that. Okay, so so I see the, the, this this is part of a wonderful set of hands that that were up. I, I saw Yiri, I believe, uh, had the first question. I, I'll, I'll get right, right back to you too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I would just ask, uh, were, were those uh, questions uh, still to SSH or? Okay, I'll, so I, 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 will, I will get back to your question about uh, AI in, uh, in document verification. Okay, uh, so, uh, Sally. Oh, so, okay, so uh, to, to repeat that, uh, there, there are talks of uh, some kind of uh, cloud in it, uh, but uh, uh, which, which, is, uh, which is specific to, uh, to each cloud, and would this be like non, not specific to the cloud? Mm, yes, it's not linked to any cloud, so it would require building uh, the client machine images with our RPMs, so that with our software components installed on them, on first boot, those will run after the subscription manager registration is completed, which, which is the Red Hat subscription management thing. Um, then we'll be able to talk to Hybrid Cloud Console, ask the question, in my organization, now that I'm alive, hello, I'm here, um, is there an identity management server that I should enroll to? And if such a registration has been done in that organization, then we can tell that machine, Yes, there is. It's over there. Here's a signed assertion that you can use to introduce yourself to that uh, identity management server. 
and then it can prepare for the enrollment and the enrollment can complete. Yes, yeah, so the comment was that this is very helpful for the, for the Bootsy and the image-based uh, operating system problem, that this part of the story was perhaps not solved well yet. So, yeah, maybe we can help with that. Yep, great, thank you. Oh, uh, yeah, that's SSH certificates. Uh, well, SSH keys on their own also are similar. So the question was, is the SSH... Um, what we've discussed about that, the same as mutual TLS with X509. Um, cryptographically, yes. Yeah, we've got, we've got like four more minutes. So, so I, I promised Yiri to, uh, to go back to his topic. But uh, please, if, if you still have questions, you, 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 can, you can meet us afterwards. So we, we can talk about what, what, uh, whatever there is. Yiri, there, there was, a, there was an, uh, a question about uh, AI verification of, uh, of documents when you are trying to present your identity, right? Why? And why that is a bad idea? Okay, uh, would you guys have a comment on that? Yeah, I, I would say it's always a bad idea if it has full access to everything, but it would be great to have something like um, an RBAC system or that I can say a grant in an OAuth, um, of OAuth 2 scheme that I say, yeah, you have only read access or you can uh, be this in my... Per, uh, be me in this context, for example. So reduced uh, execution rights, but yeah, as we have in our pipelines and so on. And can, can, can you see why that would be a good, a good idea using, using AI also? Automation and I can get rid of some ridiculous tasks I don't want to do. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah, would definitely. be the good idea, but yeah. Oh, great. Please. Oh, Mike? Uh. Yeah, so regarding AI, uh, I can uh, like mention that uh, like it may be useful for authentication uh, in some areas, like uh, for instance, uh, risk-based authentication, uh, like when uh, like uh, which is about like the fact that uh, for instance, when you are logging from the known machine, known location, then like system asks you just for the password, and when you are logging for from different machine or different location, then it's about uh, asking for like multi-factor authentication and uh, for instance when you are trying to log in from Brno and then one hour later from machine which is in Brisbane or somewhere uh, then it's uh, maybe reject authentication because it's very unlikely that you man manage to travel between those locations so like this is maybe like uh, evaluation of the risk factor for some uh, uh, things uh, may uh, might be useful, like for instance, if the uh, authentication looks uh, like natural, or if there are like attempts to log in uh, with unsuccessful password, like uh, less than one second ago, it's probably uh, it's very likely that it's not like real person. Or uh, yeah, there are like more more uh, examples of uh, if if the AI can evaluate uh, like authentication can. Uh, is like valid authentication attempt or some kind of attack, for instance, and so on. So yeah, it's maybe has it's probably has some use. Very nice. Oh, uh, Fraser, oh, would you, would you like to take take that answer? I think Marek covered it very well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, maybe one thing that I I, I would add is uh, I, I think that what we will be seeing is uh, the. Uh, threat actors will, will will be trying to forge uh, documents with AI too. Right, and so having verification on the other side might be probably also helpful. Although, uh, from my discussion yesterday with somebody here at the conference, uh, oh, it was actually the students there. Uh, there is a good chance that the that the attackers will have a, bad, a newly trained model, and we will be always lagging lagging behind them. So this will definitely be something that we will want to be uh, solving, and maybe we will have to do it a little bit more algorithmi uh, algorithmically rather than uh, by using an AI, but uh, yeah, an issue that I can see. All right, uh, I think we are out of time, right? Uh, so I would like to thank you guys. You have been absolutely amazing. I would like to thank the audience for the amazing questions. Thank you very much.